off. Hold on. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, we're waiting on Donald. Hello, Cher. Thank you for being here. Um, I really appreciate it. Every time you're on, I don't know what's going on. Um, Donald will be joining us, I believe you said, Cher, shortly. Yeah. He's having technical difficulties. So how are you? Good. I've been excited for today. It'll be interesting. Yeah. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, I read some articles about Donald, and he was formerly a detective in, in um, Ontario. Am I correct? In Ontario, Canada? Yep. Toronto, Toronto Canada. Toronto. Which, I'm sorry. From where, I'm, Ontario. where I'm from is Ontario, too, so I thought it was pretty fascinating, too. That is fascinating. Um, and so I'm sure he'll have a lot to say. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. I added two mods. There he is. Hold okay. on. Hi, Donald. How are you? I'm Tanya. Nice to meet you. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Donald. Nice to meet you, too. Hi, Cher. Thanks uh, for being here. Technical Thank you difficulties. so much. There we go. So, yeah, we uh, can hear you and we can see you. Thank you so much for being here on my little channel. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, and so tell us a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind. Uh, what is your story for those of us out there who don't know it? Well... Well, my story is no different than a lot of people, sure. except for one thing. Uh, when what was done to me, uh, which was a terrible injustice by, by I mean, uh, I had a group of corrupt lawyers and a corrupt police officer conspire to fabricate evidence and uh, send me to jail. Wow. And, and that's well proven. And I've been vindicated <laughs> since I did my time in jail. Uh, vindicated by people like the former commissioner of police, the former cabinet minister, uh, law professors, um, all sorts of people who have put in sworn affidavits. And okay. plus the fact, uh, um, you know, I had the evidence that I had. So that's, that's a quick uh, turn of my story. But since what was done to me was done to me, I found that my story is one of hundreds, Sorry. maybe even one of thousands. But there was one thing different about me, and that's that when this happened, I was a former police sergeant detective. Wow. I had the tools, I had the knowledge, I had the inclination to gather evidence in a manner that was um, usable for court, that, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that you know, I could prove where the exhibits came from, their continuity. I could prove that they were real. I know what evidence is all about. Sure. And that's what really makes my story different because I've heard so many stories that, that ring true and people don't have the evidence. They don't have the skills. Or even if they do, they don't realize what's happening to them. So they don't start to gather evidence. Sure. And... And uh, I had all of that put together and, uh, so sorry, deep mistrust of the lawyers I was already dealing with. Oh, I bet. That's right. So um, that's a short story. And that's, that's the only thing that makes my story different. But it's very sure. compelling for that reason, because I was able to prove, vindicate myself and um, get on board all sorts of people who who support me and who verified, uh, you know, uh, they they tested my evidence and they swore affidavits to it. So wonderful. That's the difference between my story and so many other stories that we've heard. Sure, where so. people are wrongfully accused. Now you you mentioned that um, you uncovered corruption in your local, you know, in, in your department. And that is, I think with all police departments, especially, I'm not sure if it happens more often in Canada than it does here, but I know it happens everywhere. Um, and I'm so sorry you had to go through that, but you know, good for you that you stood up to it and actually served time in jail. How, mu how much time did you serve again? I'm sorry, was it a month or? I did 63 days, every day in solitary okay, so confinement. Every day okay. solitary confinement because as a former police officer, uh, right. you know, it was the only way they could keep me alive. And that's 
That's what they told sure. me. Now, now I want to clarify one thing. I used to be a police okay. officer. I was a okay. sergeant of detectives from 1975 to 1990. Okay. And at that time, I left the police force. Um, uh, when I left, it was, uh, well, okay. It was due to the fact that I ended up as uh, Mr. Mom with three kids. Aww. And you can't work night shift. You can't work undercover. You can't be a cop. Sure. With three mm -hmm. vibrant oh, teenagers, you can't sure. do it. So I had, to, I had to leave what I loved. And uh, I went into business for a couple of years, and then I started a detective agency and, and, and such. So that, that was my background. Wonderful. And now, are you, um, are you currently a, a, a private detective, or have you retired from that? No, no. I, I, I left being a detective uh, quite some time ago. Okay. But uh, I was involved in various business interests. And, and what happened is one of my companies uh, in 2009 – was involved in a lawsuit, a civil lawsuit, sure. uh, over, uh, and it was a high value estate uh, that we were involved in. And that's one of the reasons why I think um, we had very esteemed senior lawyers who committed crimes to win the case. Oh, my. And, oh. and I've proven that. And the reason was, is in this particular case, um, my, my company had an interest, a small interest admittedly, but in a total amount that was, I think, almost a hundred million U.S. dollars. So oh you can see that where the, there's that kind of, of, uh, of incentive, we have even big Bay Street law firms, uh, lawyers from them committing criminal offenses to win the, win the case. So it was a civil oh. case. My, my company sued uh, a bunch of people in the country of Barbados and in Canada. And oh this my. was in the Canadian courts. And we wanted to bring the case to Canada where we thought it should be. And the Canadian court said, nope, uh, it should be someplace else, not Canada. That's wow. fine. We're all big boys and girls. This is business. Sure. But then, but then. Um, the other side had been playing rough, very rough. They had bribed a serving Ontario Provincial Police Detective Sergeant. Uh, oh, my. They had bribed him. How do I know that? I have the receipts that he signed for receiving the money. Oh, my goodness. There wow. Uh, the former commissioner of the Ontario Police, uh, Julian Fantino, Ontario Provincial Police, uh, he sworn affidavit said that, uh, and it's all available on my website. All of this is, is oh my goodness. quite well known. Uh, he swore uh, an affidavit saying that had he known what was going on back in 2009, that this officer was so corrupt, he would have, uh, he would have um, commenced a criminal investigation against the officer and other people who were involved. Lawyers, oh my. et cetera. So oh I have that goodness. kind I have that kind of of really credible people on my side. You do. I, I do. Yes. So uh, and Good excuse me, it's a little you. hot where I am. Oh no, no problem. I, I keep uh, blotting my lipstick and drinking a soda. I, I my blood sugar is crashing a bit. I'm sorry if I keep drinking a sugary soda here, but you're fine. <laughs> you look great. No problem. As long um, as my lipstick doesn't run, I'll be fine. Okay. There you go. Yeah, you have the same problem, huh? No. <laughs> mm. So, um, so Forgive in me. any in any event, uh, what happened was in 2009. I lost the case, and my company lost the case, and now it was about costs. And uh, in our jurisdiction, in Ontario, Canada, it can sometimes be normal that when somebody launches a lawsuit, as my company did, that and you lose or you don't get to go further, that all of a sudden, uh, you the other side can ask for costs. And they did so. Oh, they so did. that was fine. But to make a long story short, I was not in the country. I was oh. in Asia. I was in Asia. And it was okay. traveling. And uh, so I'm traveling in Asia. And unbeknownst to me, unbeknownst to me, 
these three corrupt lawyers and their one corrupt police officer that they were working with, they um, did an investigation to try and find me. They couldn't find me. So they created a, um, a situation where they said that they had served me for a hearing. In other words, they wanted to serve uh, my company and me with legal right. documents. I was not in the country. So they did but not they, serve you. They did not, but they claimed to the court that they had served me. And they swore an affidavit that they had served me by a certain uh, courier company on a certain day. Well, don't you, you had proof that you were out of the country though, I'm assuming. I sure, I sure did, but I also had the fact that they didn't have any paperwork at all. Not a transaction number, not an invoice, not a tracking number, not a receipt for delivery. They had none of that. So I went to the courier company and they said, oh, Mr. Best, we never gave you anything because we never received anything from the law firm. Oh, my they goodness. Lied. They lied. It was unbelievable. What a bunch of lies. Oh, my gosh, that, you poor thing. That, yeah. That's right. So, so anyway, November of 2009, I'm traveling in Asia. But it didn't stop this group of corrupt base sure. lawyers from falsely swearing to the court that they had served me in Canada with a certain court order. And during a subsequent telephone call with me, they told the court that during that call, I had confirmed to them orally that I indeed had received that certain court order. They did not know that I was in Asia. They thought I was in Canada. So they had no evidence, of course, of the oral um, approval or, or acceptance of you know, the whatever you were served. They had no proof of that, certainly. Well, well, here, here's here's what what they did. Um, you know, they these lawyers. Mm -hmm. They obtained a court order on. Uh, I believe it was sir. I believe it was signed on November 12th, 2009. Okay. The judge backdated it to November 2nd, his friend. More about that corrupt judge too. Wow. And I can call him corrupt because this is all proven. Mm -hmm. So um, what happened is uh, that judge signed that order and they signed a, a, um, affidavit that they had sent it to me on the 6th of November, no, four okay. days before it was signed. Got it? Okay, got it. Oh, sorry, six days before it was signed. So, so on the 12th, I'm sorry, on the 12th of November, the judge signed the order, backdated. How do we know that? We have the emails that the lawyer sent the order to the court on the 12th of November. Oh, my. We have the judge's notes where he says, signed on the 12th. Sure. Oh, my gosh. Well, good for you. How did that uh, turn I mean, out how corrupt does I mean, this get? Right. So it, anyway, it's terribly I, corrupt. And I, I, I shudder to think of all the other cases like that, like yours, that are exactly the same. I don't know. Um, you know, people who are wrongfully accused sitting in prison or people who... Um, are wrongly sentenced to too long and when they did basically nothing um how awful oh my gosh so how do you imagine being in that position and not having and not being a former detective and sergeant and you not knowing how to fight it right well, right first of all i didn't even know this was happening i was right? in asia you were in asia right you right had no don't, clue. Don't forget, they got the order signed on the 12th and then submitted to the same judge an affidavit sent, saying that they sent it to me on the 6th. Oh my gosh. So what? order signed on the 12th. Their affidavit says they gave it to me six days previously. And that's a lie because the courier company says so. Sure. They swore the affidavit, be put it before the same judge. The judge knows it possibly, it couldn't possibly have happened. 
Oh my But God. later on, he used that evidence to convict me of contempt of court in a secret hearing on what David told about. Wow. Uh, and and this is just this is just unbelievable. But people people just they just it is don't, unbelievable. They don't believe it. They just don't believe it. Except, of course, I have Hi. all the proof. So um sure. you know, I, I mean that that's just incredible. So anyway, here comes the punchline. Yeah. That could be the punchline. Okay. On the sixteenth of November, mm-hmm. I called the court clerk. Why? Because there had was supposed to be a, uh, a a hearing on the second, where the costs were awarded to the other side. Remember, I told you about the costs. Uh-huh. I didn't have to be there. I didn't have a lawyer. My lawyer uh, had had gone, so I just had written a letter to the judge, Your Honor. I trust you. Whatever the cost you award, my company will pay. And that letter's on my website. It's all there. So that's on November 2nd. I'm in Asia. Okay. So on November 16th, I phoned the court to say, hey, how much does my company owe to the other side in costs? Right. And and the the court clerk tells me, oh, no, the judge signed an order on the 12th. She told me he signed it on the 12th, you see. Demanding that you be uh, present yourself for questioning and bring your company's books tomorrow on the seventeenth in Toronto. Well, I'm I was in I think New Zealand at that time. I, I, I you know I can't be there tomorrow. But I I said okay. Well, I'll uh, I'll be there. And I wrote the court a letter saying that I would appear for questioning. And of course I I did. On, okay. the seven, on the 17th, I phoned in. It's only a civil case, so you're allowed right, you to You can do phone this. in, right. So I phoned in from overseas, and I, uh, I spoke to the lawyers. And uh, they said to me, basically, oh, did you get the, the order? And I said, no. Right. Yesterday, I phoned the court. I didn't tell them that I was in Asia. Yesterday, I phoned the court. They told me I'm supposed to be here. So here I am. I got no order, uh, nothing from you guys. But, hey, I'm here. And they said, oh, you must have. You must have gone to your mailbox. And I said, well, I didn't get the order. There, right. Yeah. Twelve times I said I never got the order. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So they questioned me for about a half an hour. And I wanted to answer the questions, any questions they had, but they refused to have a court reporter come. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay. I, I said, no, 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 let, let, let's put this on the record. They said, we're not going to put it on the record. You're not here. We demand you be here. Oh my gosh. And I said, it's only a civil case, uh, you know, please. Well, could you not video in or something? Or I mean, even. Well, actually, right. in those in those days, they didn't have video conferences. Oh, it was all, okay. It was uh, you know, not okay. reliable, certainly not from overseas. So I phoned in, mm-hmm. but in any, but in any event, uh, I had phoned in, and uh, uh, so I spoke with them, and I told them twelve times, I didn't get the order. Send it to me. Read it to me. What does it say? Yeah. They hung up on me. They wouldn't let me answer questions. They wouldn't let me go on the record. And now we know wow. why, because they walked out of that room and they created what they called a statement for the record, an official court document Okay. that each of the three lawyers voiced for. And they said that during the call, I had confessed to receiving the court <gasps> order. Oh, my, oh God. my gosh. Yeah. Wow. And of course, they didn't have audio evidence of that, you know. Because um, they refused to. They refused to have a, a official court reporter in at this hearing. Oh, my they goodness. They refused to have it. It was at an official place. It was supposed to go on. Had I walked in, they would have put a, an official court reporter. But they sure. refused my 
my request to have an official court reporter. Why? So that they could say anything they want. They went out, they did it. They created that legal document that was a lie. It was false, fabricated. Who says so? Oh, many law professors, the former chief of the Ontario Provincial oh Police, God. you know, uh, all sorts of people uh, say that. But they didn't know that I was secretly recording the phone call. You did. Good I for did. you. Now, I must, I must tell our, our, Is that our, legal? our, our, I must tell our friends here that in Canada, what I did was perfectly legal. Okay. It okay. may not be legal in your jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not a lawyer. Don't think that just because I did it in my jurisdiction, no, no. you can do it too. But I'm no, saying, I know my... that, right, right. The different states here have it. It's legal in certain states that only one party needs to know about the recording. I know I'm in Illinois, and both parties have to know if you're recording a phone call. But other states, literally, you don't have to tell the other party. Only one of you has to know. So I think it varies state by state. I'm pretty sure, you know, same right. as Canada, I would imagine. And it can, and there are nuances uh, and okay. such, but basically, that's it. I recorded that phone call. They didn't know. Oh, I love it. Now, the other thing that happened is when they hung up on me as I was trying to answer the questions after about a half an hour, sure. they made a mistake. They didn't hung, hang up on me. They were at one of these group call phones on the desk, and, and they failed hang to hang up on no. me. No. So I kept the recording going, and I listened to what they said. Good for you. What did you hear? Yeah. I heard them plotting to create the false evidence. The transcript of this, the recording is all at my website. You're kidding me. Oh, I will go oh read God. that tonight. And, and they discuss things and on their way out of that room to go to the other room and, and, and get the and and create that fabricated evidence. One oh lawyer said God. one lawyer said to the other, Hey, let's say this. And the other one said, No, 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 can't say that. He might have recorded the call. Good. They knew so that. We have then. intent. We have intent. So anyway, um, there we have it. Uh, with a recording like that, one would think that I would be just fine to come back to Canada. But here's what happened. They scheduled a hearing with the court. Oh. And, and meanwhile, they didn't tell me about it. But they did send me this time a copy of the court order i had that telephone conversation with them on november 17th on yeah. november 18th they sent me the the copy of the court order finally they sent it to my mailbox well, that's nice of them <laughs> so i got it but they also sent me this fabricated evidence that they had created i was incensed I, I wrote to the judge and I faxed the judge a letter saying that they had lied and saying that they had fabricated this. I did not say that I had recorded the conversation. I merely said that their evidence they created was fabricated and false. Sure. They scheduled a secret hearing. They got up in court and we have, and you can read it all at my website, yeah. The judge basically said, what about this? You know, he's accusing you of, of, of creating false evidence. And they basically said that I was lying and that I was slandering them. Oh, my God. And it was exactly as they said. Oh, my. Of course they did. You know, what oh, would you expect? Yeah. That's it. So in a hearing that I wasn't told about in – early January, January 10th, I think it was, of 2010. Sure. The court found me guilty of contempt of court. Of course they did. Contempt? Yes, of course they did. And they sentenced me to three months in prison. Oh. I'm in Asia. Oh, my. But I was okay, right? I had a recording, right? Right. I had all the evidence. Should what be okay, happened? Right? Right. Should be. Right. 
Well, that was only the start of the battle. That was only the start of the battle. Because what happened is I tried to find a lawyer to represent me, to bring me back to Canada. The judge had issued a, 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 an right. order for my arrest. So after going through two lawyers who refused to take my case, who started to take my case, I could pay the lawyers. Right. Um, but they were uncomfortable with the fact that I had evidence, solid evidence, irrefutable evidence, mm -hmm. proving that three of their yeah. Bay Street buddies, senior lawyers from some of Canada's top law firms, biggest law, firm, law firms, had committed criminal offense, obstruct justice, perjury, you name it. Oh yeah, nobody wants to get involved with that. No. Nobody wants to get involved Certainly with not. that. Yeah. Finally, I got a lawyer. Good. And the lawyer was a big name. And I gave him $60,000 in fees. Sure to create, uh, to go before the court, create an affidavit and a, and a petition. I'm still in Asia, because if I come back, they'll arrest me, I'll go right to jail. Right, I wanted, right. I, my lawyer uh, had the court lift, uh, put a stay on the warrant for my arrest so I could come back before the court and tell the court what was going, you know, what happened. Here's right. the truth, here's the evidence. So, get back to Canada, lawyers representing me. He said, would you mind if I go and see the senior judge about this and maybe it can be settled quietly? Good. I said, what do you mean quietly? He said, well, look, uh, how about everybody just forgets about everything? Wow. And I'm like, well... I'm not sure I'm happy with that, but if you want to go and not. but if you want to go and talk to the senior judge, you go right ahead and do it. Sure. He sure. came. He came back and he said, "They don't care about your evidence. They're going to do you. They're going to send you to court or oh, to jail, God. rather, to protect these lawyers. There's nothing I can do for right. you." Oh my goodness! Wow. Unless. unless Unless, Unless you uh, apologize to the court. Apologize to the court for what? For what, right. Uh, well, because she didn't show up. Well, I didn't show up because they didn't tell me they lied. Right. <laughs> yeah. They mean apologize yeah. for making them look dumb is what they really mean. Sure. And you have to forget about anything to do with criminal charges or anything against the lawyers. Mm. Oh my God. I said I wouldn't do that. I said there's no way. So I was offered a deal. Get it? If I just take the deal and basically plead guilty mm -hmm. to something that's false, Sir? they won't send me to prison. You better take the deal, Don, or they'll send you to prison. And they're serious. In oh other my. words, your fate has already been been discussed, your fate has already been sealed, and you haven't even gone be back before the corrupt judge, a guy by the name of Justice J. Brian Shaughnessy. You haven't sure. even gone back before Shaughnessy to show him the evidence. It's already been decided. Oh my They're God. going to protect these lawyers. There's nothing I can do would. for you, Don. Right. right. So I said, oh. no. And he said, I quit. Really? Yeah. He said, I've, I have another lawyer who, uh, who knows more about civil. I'm a criminal lawyer. This is a civil matter. Uh, talk with him. So I went and spoke with him. And the lawyer said to me, with my lawyer there, because what they were trying to do is convince me to take the deal. Right. And the lawyer said to me, look, Donald, all lawyers lie. Live with it. I'm sure Get they do. Right. Get on with your life. Take the yeah, deal. and you took the plea deal. No, no, I didn't take the plea deal, and both my lawyers quit. <laughs> Therein, wow. I tried to find a lawyer. I went to the court, 
my lawyer bowed out and uh, the judge tried to intimidate me into into uh, basically the plea deal. Sir. And I said, no, I'll represent myself in court. Or, no, well, actually, at that point, I said, look, please give me uh, some time to get a new lawyer. Now, this is right before Christmas 2012. Yeah, 12. Wow. Right Talking before Christmas. Long, right? He gave me two weeks to find a lawyer. This is in the <sighs> middle of Christmas and Hanukkah. Right? Oh, my. So you can't find a lawyer. No. But I tried. And in the next few months, I tried to find a lot of lawyers, 138 Ontario lawyers refused to take my case. I've written about this. It's at the uh, uh, York University Law School National Self-Represented Litigants Project. Uh, they published my article. It was apparently uh, the most read article that year. Wow. But 138 lawyers said to me, Donald, I've listened to your evidence. I've looked at it. They're framing you. They're fabricating it. They're guilty of this. They're guilty of that. I can't help you. They'll destroy me. They'll destroy my family. They'll destroy my business. Uh, I went to school with them. They had all sorts of, uh, all, every lawyer had a different story. All right. Some, some were very, very sorry. Uh, they were ashamed. They told me so that they couldn't wow. take my case. But they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it because they said they said, and and I believe them, that it would it would destroy, uh, it would just destroy them. And uh, you know they went to the same church, they went to the same synagogue, they went to school with them, they worked yeah. in the same firm. I mean there was a a host of oh so, and the big uh, law firms. You see when they get conflicts of interest or cases that would be a conflict of interest for them, they give it to other smaller lawyers in town. Okay. So a lot of the smaller lawyers re rely upon the big law firms to keep in business. So they're not okay. about to go after these lawyers. And basically ended up having to self-represent myself in court. Oh, I bet you could do that well, though. Apparently not well enough. I went to prison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. What was that like? I mean, I, I assume that you um, had never been in jail or anything prior to that. Was that awful? I, I can only imagine. Well, there, there, there is one part of it before I went. I, even up until the end, mm -hmm. I had such faith in the system. I thought they would never do this to me. Not with the evidence that I had. They would just never do this to me. Right. But they did. Well, not only did they do that, as a as a Canadian citizen facing prison, facing charges that right. would bring me to prison, I was not allowed to cross-examine the very witnesses that the court relied upon to convict and sentence me. None of the lawyers not the police officer, the corrupt police officer. I was not allowed to uh, cross-examine them on any of the, the uh, any of the evidence, and the court refused to take my recordings into evidence. Oh my gosh! Wow! Entirely corrupt. Totally corrupt. All they're doing totally is saving their, their buddies. That's right. And once again, you don't have to believe me. You can listen to all the people who have examined the evidence. You can examine the evidence for yourself on my website. So right. away I went to jail, and I knew I was in trouble. Wow. Um, they, they, put, they put the handcuffs on me. They put me down in the cells. And within 20 minutes, the entire inmate population in the cells of the courthouse, knew I was a former police officer. Oh, oh my no. God. And oh you know, God. they all did that too. That's an insider. That's an insider job. That's exactly oh, it. Heck yeah. Oh my God. Wow. And it, and it gets better. What I didn't know was when Justice Shaughnessy, the judge, he, he uh, removed the stay on my arrest uh, warrant. So he said the arrest warrant's valid again. You're going to jail. Right? Oh. I hear a little noise there. Is that me or someone else? I don't think so. Is she, 
Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, it's not so, over here, but I never know. <laughs> okay. So, so, so anyway, uh, what they did, what the judge did is while I was downstairs, don't forget, court is finished for the day. I've been led away. I'm a self-represented litigant. I have no lawyer. Right. Court, court is done. The court reporter is gone for the day. And the judge goes to a back room. And there, off the court record, without a court reporter present, he created a new warrant for my arrest that oh my increased God. my prison sentence by 50%. Oh, my. He never told me. There was no record and no copy of this new warrant put into the court record. There was no transcript of it happening. He just did it. Why? He was corrupt. But the oh, other my thing goodness. Is it, is it, yeah. Yeah. It kept me in prison past the appeal period. Get it? Oh, no. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, so. I didn't know, and they, they put handcuffs on me. They have to put me in a, uh, a separate uh, compartment in the prisoner transfer van, and off I go to the Central East Correctional Center prison. And all the way, I'm hearing the rest of the guys in the, in the van saying that they're going to rape me, saying they're going to murder me, force oh me to God. give them oral sex. It's, oh it's a God. terrible, terrible thing, okay? I, so bet. I, oh, I I mean, you know, to be a prisoner, just an ordinary guy who's never been a prisoner uh, in prison before, that's that's frightening. Yeah. Then add on, I, I, you're a detective on top of that. That's a, uh -huh. a that's a right. Murder sentence. And to know that they had that somebody on the inside had tipped off the rest of the prisoners because that's Ooh. the only way it would have happened. Of right. course. Right. right, of course. So um, I get to the prison. Oh, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I'm, I'm just looking okay. at the chat here, seeing if anything's popping up that we need to talk about. But go right ahead. Right. Sir. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. So I arrive at prison. There's a bunch of uh, the senior uh, commissioners standing around and the warden. And they've got this warrant. And they said, I've never seen this before in my life. We have a new warrant for you. And it extends your sentence. Uh, what did you do to piss off the judge? Oh, yeah, what? <laughs> like, it matters, really, that they, I mean, yeah. I think that, yeah. So, oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. So they said the only way that we can keep you alive is in solitary confinement. Oh. I thought to myself, hey, come on. I'm, uh, you know, I'm in my, I'm in my early 60s. Huh? I'm a tough old copper been around right right mentally i'm strong should be a piece of cake right no I no i wouldn't think so well the no, solitary maybe sure what I, what I thought mm -mm. you know they put me in that uh that first cell that first night and it was covered in blood and feces oh my god and what? this was this yeah this was the medical detention cell for the first night Oh, my gosh. Oh, they, had, they had to clear a cell for me. Oh so God. they put me in the medical detentions, and it's just covered in blood and feces. I asked for a and bucket. And they wouldn't and clean that up? Oh, my gosh. I asked for a bucket and mop to clean it up. And so they uh, they gave me a bucket of mop, and I cleaned it up, gave them back the bucket. I asked for a blanket, new blanket. They didn't give me. So there's this old blanket. Who knows who's been in there for what? So I just mm – -hmm. uh, I had – Wape the top of the concrete bed. The bed's made out of concrete. No mattress right. in this particular cell. And so I just took the blanket off, threw it in the corner, and I had cleaned it with the mop. And that's my first night on solid concrete without a blanket, surrounded by feces oh on the walls God. everything. Next day, they took me upstairs, and I, I realized what the woman meant. Uh, it was a, a guard, a uh, guard. Uh, an administrator who told me, you know, solitary is where you're going. The food's good there, but it's kind of noisy. I had no idea what you meant by kind of noisy. Right. And so I went up there and 
I don't know how it is. I suspect it's the same in the United States. I've spoken with many people who have been in solitary all, all throughout North America. It's the same. Many of the inmates are there because they're of bad behavior. Some are there because they, want, they have to be protected. But there are many, right. many mentally ill people in the prison system because we, we don't take care of them anymore. We, we, we used to take care of them. Uh, in Canada anyway, in various group homes and things. But then we sure. decided we go for community. We're going to put them in the community and take away those resources that we used to have to cope with people who are not quite right or seriously right. evil, crazy evil. Right. But no, they all end up up there and it's just screaming. Um, f uh, people eating their own feces, Oh, people my. running against the cell door. I mean, the door must weigh five, 600 pounds running against it. I counted one time over a thousand times. There's not oh. much to do in solitary. Mm. Um, I am and, so sorry. Oh my. <laughs> and the lights are on 24 hours a day. Okay. 24 hours a day. Wow. That's torture. It's all torture by anybody's, anybody's business. It's torture. You lose your sense of time. You lose your sense of uh, day. Well, sure, what day it is, right? Yeah, and I mean, I'm a very stable guy. I've got sure. uh, a family and friends who love me, waiting for me on the outside. Oh. Uh, I have so many p things that many people don't have, right? Sure. So people are broken. They're just destroyed, and I saw that. Um, and, and, uh, and, and that made me very much an advocate to stop solitary confinement. It's just torture. I wrote some articles, Globe and Mail, some other national newspapers and sure. such, gave some interviews on, on national radio about it. And the law has been changed now in Canada. Right. Um, hopefully, you know, maybe I had a small part in that, but there's certainly, certainly a, a lot of people who documented what happens? I mean, people who go into solitary confinement for, we had one chap, uh, I think his name was Alan Carpe. He was in solitary for four years. Oh, oh my. I think he stole a bicycle. I can't remember. For I'm a bicycle? Serious. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And he just, maybe it was a car and he just ended up going nuts. Either way. I mean. Yeah. E either way. And it, it just fees. Weak people are destroyed. Um, and uh, it's a terrible, terrible thing. So now they can't put people in solitary for more than a certain period of time. Maybe it's two weeks or something. I don't Good. know. But even, even that's an incredible. How nice period. that you so, had a hand in changing that. I, well, that's really maybe good. I did. Maybe you know. Maybe maybe I my case did. was part of it. Probably. But, um, so, part of the way through uh, this solitary confinement, I finally find a lawyer. Some friends found me a lawyer, sure. who uh, who had the courage that matched his integrity, because that's that's really what it's all about. Most people are good. They really are. They are. Most people want to do the right thing, whether mm -hmm. they're cops or lawyers or doctors or teachers right. or plumbers. They all want to do the right thing. Correct. But if you see something that's corrupt, now you have to make a choice. And mm -hmm. most people look the other way. They right. lack the courage. And in my case, the... Uh, in my case, the Law Society of Upper of Ontario, uh, they looked the other way officially. I wrote them, like, you know, they, they looked the other way. Turned out that uh, some of the people who were involved in my case had heavy, heavily influence there. I mean, it's, it's a self-regulating yeah. profession. What do you expect? Yeah. When the cops investigate themselves, what do you expect? Right, right. When lawyers investigate themselves, what do you expect? Correct, so, right. Yeah, yeah. So with, with no outside accountability, uh, no independent oversight, what do you expect? That, that's what's going to happen. It's, now, it's what do you, have you investigated or looked into the, the Chris Watts case, the Watts family murder case at all? Yeah, um, you wrote a book about that. I did. did. Right? Yes, you did, Tanya. Yeah. I did, I did. Yeah. Yes, you did. No, I'm curious I haven't... about your corruption, yeah, how you feel like people like Chris Watts or other high profile too, how you feel like, do you think, because what Chris did plea, right? He, he did plea, right. He took a plea deal. And, and he did I wonder... confinement too, right? 
Well, I'm okay. sorry. I, I don't know the the specifics of that of right. Edgar's wife. I read a little bit on Wikipedia. He mm -hmm. took a plea deal to to uh, avoid sure. the death penalty, as I re as I recall. So, what okay. does that mean? Did he do it, Tanya? Did he do it? I think so. I think he did it all alone by himself. You know, um, I have no doubt about that. There are some things that kick in but mostly because of shoddy police work right and another thing i wanted to ask you too as a, a former um detective there's another his mistress is nicole kessinger and they let her walk um right. they asked her a few questions and it, is it are you of the opinion that they would not have let her simply walk away if they had any evidence whatsoever that would incriminate her in this crime. I mean, I don't think that the uh, local police department is corrupt, and I don't think that the Colorado Bureau of Investigation is, but, you know, you never know. But there's what probably corrupt cops everywhere. Right. Oh, they're, they're probably right. Like, there's, there's corrupt doctors, there's corrupt, you know, lawyers, right. whatever. But do you think that the, the CBI and the FBI and the local police department would have cleared this woman if they still are investigating her? Do you think they would have let her run free for two years, essentially? I, can't, on that? I, I can't speak to that case. Sure, right. But I can right. speak to a case that might tell you something about what happens. Sure. And that's Carla Hamoka. Does that ring a name? The yeah. Bernardo murders in Canada? Uh -huh. uh, essentially, a husband and wife were serial killers uh -huh. in Ontario. And for years, years, uh, he raped and, and almost murdered uh, women. And then when he got together with his wife, they became hunters, stalkers, oh, yeah. and they kidnapped and murdered young women off the street. They yep. even murdered her sister. I know. Homo Tanya Homoka's sister. I remember that. Uh, I mean, we're talking evil. You know, Very we're talking so. evil. He, and that's another thing I, I, I say. Some people say, oh, they're crazy. No, they're not crazy. They're evil. Mm -hmm. And and I think that those of us who are involved with the the justice system and, and, and everything have met people who are just raw evil. They right, kill you for right. fun, right? Okay, well, Absolutely. that's what these people did. Mm. But the moral of the story here is she went to the police and she cut a deal. You think so? Oh, oh Carla this did. Is all, did this her. is all well documented. She sure. went to the police uh, through a lawyer and she cut a deal. And basically the deal was my husband forced me into all of this because mm. I think the circle was closing. You know, the authorities were closing in. My husband, I mean, they used to, it's terrible. They took the young women to their home killed them, sexually uh, sexually assaulted, yeah. drugged them, killed them in the basement of their own home. I know. And um, so anyway, uh, she went to the authorities through a lawyer and cut a deal. And she turned prosecution evidence. And for that, the deal was she would be spared because, of course, she's a woman. Mm. Obviously, it's the guy who's the leader. Right. Here. It turned out that I believe she was the ringleader and she kind of called the shots. It was mostly her from what I remember. And now, there did were she walk free, there completely were video, free? There were videotapes of the murder mm -hmm. where she was, where she murdered, where she was all part of it. Mm. It's called, there's a one book I think is called Deal with the Devil. Maybe, you know, yep. the, it's a very well documented case. Sure. And if I get some of the facts wrong, folks, you know, please research it for yourself. Okay? Sure, not, don't worry I'm not about really that. Right, right, right up to it, date on it. But she is free now. I, I can't remember how many years uh, that it took her to get free. It wasn't much, five, six years, something like that. She's changed her name. She's, uh, there have been reports that she's married with children. And uh, that's, that's who she is. So they allowed her to walk free. They already did the deal with oh. her. And then the videotapes were found showing that she was, if anything, uh, at least a partner in this evil. Oh, so, definitely. Yeah, know, she, how, how, do we, how do we relate that to your, to, to the story of, of that man murdering his family uh -huh. and the girlfriend and such? 
things like that happen. And so she may have gotten a deal or may she, have been. Um, oh, no. no. Don't make no. me flip flop again. No, I no, I don't think she was involved at all. Um, I saw Dr. Beer and I would love for her to jump in too, but I don't think Nicole Kessinger was involved at all. So she may I, have I been know nothing about immunity, the case. but I right. don't know. Just by talking no, to you, I was already no. changing my mind before it even came up, darn it. Oh, well, no. <laughs> and, and, you know, I've, uh, you have to remember, even when you're doing a, a, a good job and doing the best you can as a police right. officer, as a detective, okay? And, um, you know, you, you have limitations. You have your own skills and, and, and limitations, your personal limitations. Maybe there's, I mean, some of these homicide squads, my goodness, in Chicago, I, I, I forget, there were 40 people shot over the weekend, or was it 120? I can't remember. I don't know. I'm here in Chicago myself, but I and, do. And a dozen deaths or whatever it is, and a little girl and everything like mm -hmm. that. I know. How do you even start investigating those properly? I don't know. I you don't can't. know. It, it, uh, uh, unless it's uh, unless there's videotape or something. How do you even start? You know. No, okay. I don't know. Especially with okay. that many. Um, where where do you go? I mean, where where would you start? Unless it's easy to figure out who actually did it. Um, let me uh, pull up a. Uh, comment here. Hi, Megan. Chris did not have to get a factual basis for the crimes. This stipulation was left out of the plea agreement. Can a DA legally live, leave out a stipulation from the revised statutes? Do you know? Don? No, I, I mean, I'm in a different oh. jurisdiction Is that and possible? it's been a long Can time, you know, so I, I can't, I can't sure. answer to that, to that case. I think, uh, Judging sure. by talking to Donald and, and some other um, corruption that I've uncovered too, no, it may not be legal. It's definitely not legal, but will they do it? Hell yeah, if it covers their right. butt, right? Uh -huh. Well, there's a, a reluctance to admit you're wrong in anything. Some right. dentist cracks your tooth because he did something wrong. He, he doesn't admit it. Not going to admit right. it. Somebody convicts somebody for something. Maybe they're not going to admit it. They should. I had uh, a friend of mine, Correct. Uh, right. a really good friend, who I trust implicitly, e even to this day with everything. And he convicted a man of murder, of a gangland killing. Sure. And then a few months after, he started getting more information. And he found out that he was wrong, that the whole police force, Toronto police force, was wrong. It, it, the wrong guy was in jail. Oh, oh my gosh. That's right. Uh, but, you know, he had done everything he could. Mm. Um, was the guy around? Was he a criminal? Uh, was there evidence? Yes. But in the end, he went to the Crown Attorney, he and his squad. They investigated the whole thing. And they had to go back and they said, look, there's new evidence. There's a new right. witness. We've corroborated what they've said. It wasn't here before. We got the wrong man in jail. Oh, my gosh. Now, that takes guts. That yeah. takes courage. That takes integrity. Because the Crown doesn't want to be told he convicted the wrong man. The mm -hmm. judge doesn't want no. to be told he convicted the wrong person. The cop, other coppers Correct. in your squad might not want to be told that. So, right, right. You know, but you have to do the right thing. But some people don't. Right. Correct. Most, most people seem to lack the courage of that they should have, given their integrity. Definitely. No, I agree. I agree. And um, uh, Marie says there is a movie about Paul Bernardo and Carla named Carla. I do. I, I've watched that movie a million times because it's so, such a horrifying um, cry, story. I mean, everything they did was just so frightening and I, I wonder if people like that are, are psychopaths I would think you know, so, especially if it was her own little sister at one point um, mm. Carla had yeah. to be a, a psychopath there's no way she, that anyone with any emotions or any empathy at all could do that to their you know, sister right. of all people I mean no way <clears throat> I, so I agree mm -hmm. on the other hand 
um, once again, I say, don't discount evil as a force. Now, True. I'm not. I'm right. not even. I'm not saying, you know, trying to impart some spiritual or religious to this. Although I have my beliefs. Sure. But uh, okay, here's one. Uh, when I was in uniform in downtown Toronto many many years ago, saw a fellow walking along, and some people just have the look. They look over their shoulder. They see the police. They give the look at horror. It's like. You know, they've done something, right? Right, right. <laughs> you know, I mean, after, after 10 years as a police officer, you can you know. Tell. Yeah, yeah, at least right. respect. And, and the laws are different as to what you can do. And so we walked up, my partner and I, hi, how are you? How are you doing? Say, don't we know you? When was the last time you were arrested? And he started to get real nervous and he was he's looking for the escape route. Oh, no. What's in the bag? What's in the bag? He had a bag. <laughs> Get a bag. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh-oh. So <laughs> what was in the bag was stolen medical equipment from the hospital where he was oh. near. Wow. And it was equipment for draining blood. Oh, my Ooh. God. What would you want that for? I can't imagine. Well. Maybe to sell it. Now, this is, this is mm. many years ago, so we didn't really bother with a warrant. We got his permission. Sure. We said, are you okay? Can we come to your home and look to make sure you're okay? Good. And he honestly did say, okay. Oh, no. Because maybe he knew he needed help, right? What did so, you find? He had oh, no. uh, been sacrificing his own blood and animals. Oh, for what? what? The, whole, what? the whole place to some spiritual entity whose name I'm not going to mention. No, do not, please. Oh, no. I believe in that oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think well, I me know. too. Oh, so, my. Um, there we go. And that's what we found. Now, you know what? <laughs> You can call that crazy. You can. I would. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it is crazy. Or evil. And there, there are psychological terms. Sure. But do not discount <laughs> the role of evil yeah. in crime and people's behavior. Not right. just crime, all sorts of crime. Okay, all so I always behaviors. thought, Chris Watts, I always, because there, I've heard like EVPs and stuff like that, I always thought that there was like, it sounds so dumb, but that Chris was like controlled by like a demon. Even I thought maybe Nicole had done some kind of like um, seance or something in the house. And it like, I don't know. Chris. I don't know. But I always, I always, a part of me always believed that. They no, said his I eyes were dark too. Right. Well, uh, let me put it this way. I don't discount those things. Mm -mm. And my time in the police force and just being on this earth, uh, I don't I don't discount those things. Now, whether you say they're real or whether you say that they're just people are influenced by other people and whatever, or they're just evil. Um, okay, here's another one. When I was a motorcycle cop, I investigated a young boy at that time. He, I wouldn't even call him a young man. He was uh, 10 years old something like oh, wow. that. And I put in a report that said, I think he's going to kill somebody. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, I put that in. And the sergeant came to me. I said, you can't put that in a report, Donald. I mean, you can't put it in. But I No, did. no. You shouldn't. I, and I, but did. Whatever. I, I, left, I left it in. Three years later, I get a call from Homicide. We have a report here that you wrote three years ago. Tell us. Oh about it. my! Yeah. And so he did. you know, yeah. Now, was it uh, was he just born bad? Was it a, a matter of socialization? Um, you know, once again, we can get into the whole the, the the whole explanation for human behavior. Are we born this way? 
Is it uh, how we were raised? It's the society, is it our values that were imposed upon us? Human behavior is complex. It is. And, and there's sure. all sorts of, uh, so, so to attribute it to this or that, but once again, I don't discount evil as a force that um, causes or influences human behavior. No, you can't. I, I agree. And, um, you know, again, I, I see the world, every, like we were talking about earlier, everybody to me is a good person. And I don't, it's so difficult to think there is evil out there, pure evil. And I sort of explain it away by saying they, you know, they're, they're a psychopath and they just don't have any emotions. And it's an actual psychological illness, you know, rather than it being actual evil, but apparently that's true too, because some of the things that people have done, I can't explain it in any other way. Um, right. You know what I mean? And even something like the Chris Watts case, I can't, I think he was a, a psychopath. I think he had no emotions, no human emotions, no feelings, no, no empathy. And therefore he was able to do whatever um, would make his life better at the moment. But, but if you have a father who's claiming, whether it's true or not, a father claiming that he had to kill his baby daughters two times, do you think that's psycho or would you say that's oh. evil? That's evil. That is evil. You're right. You're well, absolutely uh, right. Let's look at that case uh, that the chair's interested in. Uh, Charles uh, Wilcox? Is mm -hmm. it? Yeah. 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 Now, now, for those who don't know, uh, there was a, a little girl sexually assaulted, and Charles, and uh, I, I don't know him, I've read the articles about him, I've chatted with him online, mm -hmm. uh, he claims that he was forced into pleading guilty mm -hmm. to that crime because he was threatened that they would put him away forever unless he did, et cetera, et cetera. Now, since then, I understand, and once again, Folks, I'm only reading what I've I've read, so I'm not saying things things are true. Right. But what I'm what I'm saying is is that I understand that the victim, the witness, after growing up, has exonerated Charles, and yet it's still on the record because he did. That's right. guilty. That that that's right. So um, what my my point in talking about that is. The suspect or the man who's now suspect for sexually assaulting that small, small child, mm -hmm. I believe was related to that small child. I, I think yeah. if I'm remembering the, the other uncle. Right, it, was, it was the other uncle, not Charles, but the other brother. It was the uncle. Can, can you imagine um, how e evil that is? A and Charles girl like even that, said five years old child. or whatever she was. Yep. Terrible. Oh my God. Evil. Okay. Hold on, guys, one sec. I'll be right back. Sure. Go ahead, keep talking. <laughs> okay, sure. But but sure, you know, for me, now when I hear people say that they pled guilty to crimes that they didn't commit, even horrific crimes, I understand that now because right. I was offered that deal, but I was at a different point in my life. First of all, I knew the system, I was strong. I, I have an impeccable record behind me, and but neither did I have two little children at home who were relying upon me to, to go to work every day and kept, keep them fed. My children are old, and they're long gone, and they're adults, and they're on their own. I didn't have to worry about that. Right. So I was able to stand strong, but I understand why innocent people plead guilty to crimes they didn't convict or right. they, they, they didn't commit. And we also know now from, for instance, a ton of DNA evidence that has, has uh, vindicated so many people for serious crimes, murder, rape. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that DNA uh, has even proven that people who have been executed were innocent. Right. Okay? Right. But many of them pled guilty. They confessed. That's the number one thing that I hear, especially with defending Charles, was, oh, yeah, well, he pled. So, of course, he's innocent, right? The prison's full of innocent people. But he pled, though. It's well, like, you guys don't understand. Yes. 
Yeah, so you understand there yourself and scared the crap out of yourself that you you just don't get it. Of course, you're going to plea because you're scared. You don't know what you're doing. Right, and at the time, as I understand, Charles, he was uh, just a kid, really. Yeah, he was younger. Yeah. Yeah, I think he was really twenty or something. Hi, Tanya. We're we're talking about the fact that that I now believe and know that uh -huh. innocent people plead guilty to crimes they didn't. Sure, they and, do. Uh, and we spoke about uh, how DNA evidence has even proven uh, many people who were, well, some who were even executed uh, mm. and, and has vindicated uh, people for rape and murder. We've, we've, we've seen all that. Sure. Uh, but these people confessed, even though right. it was later shown that they, that it wasn't them. Why, Why did, did they, they confess? confess? What, Why? what would why would they confess? What would bring? Well, um, look at what, well, happened, what happened to, happened to Donald, right? And That's Donald, true. And you know You're right. So think of someone who didn't, who wasn't a detective and knew how to fight the system. Of course, sure. Wow. Right, or or just had little children, okay. um, uh, and they were going to jail for three or nine or ten years. We'll put you in jail for the max fifteen years, buddy. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And, so you and, think this happens uh, more often than perhaps we're even aware of? Ab absolutely. I think so. You know, I, I used to be a strong believer in the death penalty. I really sure. was as, as a police officer. And, I mean, I've seen horrible, horrible, horrific things where, okay, there's a videotape of the guy doing it, okay? Right. And, 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 and terrible, terrible things. But I know now that so many executed people have been innocent and i'm not talking just technically innocent on some law or, or whatever they didn't whatever, do right. it they didn't do it wow. and that, that i uh long ago when i realized that and i was on the police force when that happened i i just you know whatever it is i cannot support the death penalty i cannot support it because I, we I are really don't either. No. right yeah yeah so for even the most horrific, I, I cannot. Mm -hmm. Because what if we're wrong? What There's that slight chance we're wrong. And well, that's, we've shown um, it's much more than slight chance. <laughs> yes, Chair. Mm -hmm. What do you mm -hmm. think about um, a detective then who has, what did Tam say? A hundred, nine out of a hundred arrests, 98 of them are plea deals. What would you think about that kind of detective? Well, that's quite normal in the entire justice system. Really? It's absolutely normal. Yes, it's plea deal after deal after deal after deal after deal. You've even got criminal lawyers uh, and civil lawyers, too, who, who have never gone to trial. Hmm. And this came out, this came out uh, in, a, in a Toronto case. I won't name the law firm in case I get a detail incorrect, but it, it was it was a law firm that had a famous reputation for doing a certain type of case. And it turned out that in all the years, they'd never had one trial. They, oh my. they, they, did, they did a plea every time they could. And that's true of many criminal lawyers too. So, really? Uh, yes. So, I mean, this is the way the system runs. It's set up that there must be, at whatever it is, 90, 80%. I have no idea. I'm right. making, making up the number. But if everybody tomorrow insisted on a trial, the system would be dead in a week and a half. I mean, that's the way really? it is. Sure, it would. And that's true of civil court, criminal court, United States, Canada, Britain. It's all deals. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and, that leads to a couple of things, and it's because of a couple of things. First of all, it means that sometimes police don't put the case together as well as they should. Sure. Sometimes because he'll plea. He's always plea. Mm -hmm. Some, sometimes uh, it's because um, the, the courts are set up that they just can't give everybody a fair hearing. No, it's just, you're right. There's, there's no resources for that. And and so this is what they do. Everything is dealt away. Um, 
so it can happen at the prosecutor level. It can happen at yeah. the police level, but there's also uh, a thing where they say, ah, eh, we'll just lay the charges. We'll just lay the charges and let the court sort it out. Right. Well, no, if you, had, if, you, if, you, if you knew that you had to go to trial on something, you would lay far fewer uh, charges. Agree? Sure, I agree. Yeah. yeah, I think that's true. That if you, if you um, were a police officer or you were a, a crown and you knew that everything had to go to trial, and all the evidence would be vetted, I think that uh, half the cases would disappear overnight. Sure. And many times, police officers will lay multiple charges in hopes of, of leveraging that to a deal. For a plea deal. Okay. Right. That's right. That makes sense. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Are there any current cases that are um, infamous that you think someone's been wrongly accused that are, you know, that we would recognize the particular case? I mean, is there anything out? I mean, what about the, what about the Kaylee Anthony thing that can you yeah. even believe that? Yeah. You know, I, 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 I'm really, I'm really not uh, familiar enough with that particular case, although sure. I'm familiar with it, but not familiar enough, but I will say this. Yeah. See, in the last, seven, eight years since I've been an advocate for access to justice, anti-corruption, okay. and, and uh, uh, talking about integrity in the justice system and police and legal system. I found so many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people have personally contacted me. And, and sometimes, you know, I feel really badly. I can't even answer. I can't even answer every email. I can't do it. I, I, I don't have yeah. a staff. It's just me. And these hundreds and hundreds of my, uh, my fellow people, they have the stories that ring true, that a bank uh, made a mistake and they lost their home because it was taken away and oh that a phalanx of lawyers came and, and, and totally destroyed them in civil court, even though everybody knew. Right. That a, that, that a guy, um, that evidence was planted and everybody knew that um, somebody volunteered to be an executor. Somebody came to somebody and said, look, um, uh, you're my friend. We uh, be an executor on my will when I die? And the friend says, yeah, okay. Right. Well, the friend dies and three years later, the executor's charged criminally because they made a mistake or maybe they didn't. Mm -hmm. There's been a civil trial and now all of a sudden the executor is losing their home. They basically did, they were way in over their heads and, and it's, it's just an injustice after injustice after injustice. Uh, think of all the cases that you two have come across, you know? True. Um, yeah. So, so, that's what I know that uh, this, these justice systems that we have right. and the police, law enforcement and the prosecutions are tremendously flawed and they oh, have uh, uh, very little accountability, very little oversight. And that's what's so great about you two mm -hmm. that you have taken upon yourself, you know, to, to, to look at these cases and to where you can, because you only have so much time. I mean, we're only Correct. people. Right. But where you have, you, you know, you've taken this upon yourself and mm -hmm. you're doing the best you can to right. help some people find justice. I and agree. Now, and why haven't the, the, the media done that? Why haven't the so-called legacy media ever ever done that? I don't. I really don't know. I suspect yeah. it's because there are thousands of cases and they'd be doing nothing else. Oh, that's it's true. You're, you're absolutely right. And they only pick and choose the sensational ones so that um, I really don't know why. Um, Megan, the statutes state that a defendant must give a factual basis for the crimes they committed to the trial judge. This judge will determine whether or not the factual basis matches the evidence report. Right. Um, well, it's a corrupt judge, though. Right. Right, and now we're figuring out that a lot of people in there, you know, corrupt apparently, um, just based on Donald's experience alone. And I well, know it's not well, isolated in Canada. Let me clarify. 
absolutely yeah. the vast majority of people involved in the justice system, the legal right. system, the courts, the police, they're not corrupt. I mean, the Correct. system just, it, we'd be living in a different, in different countries if, if it were so. Mm -hmm. But that small number of people who are corrupt mm -hmm. are empowered when good people look the other way. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's exactly what happens all the time. So the influence of the corrupt is far larger than it should be. Sure. And, and they get away with far more than they should because people lack the courage. But they also lack courage because they know they have to feed their family and whistleblowers right. are absolutely yep. destroyed. Mm -hmm. Oh, they, they sure are. are. Turning the other right. way out of fear and because they don't really want to be in the middle of that. No, who right. would? I mean, you've got to have a really strong constitution and, you know, be able to support yourself or, you know, know that your family is going to be okay, no matter how it turns out for you to actually dive in and do something like what you, what you did, Donald, you know. Um, just like those 138 lawyers told me. Yes, mm -hmm. the lawyers lied and fabricated evidence. But I'm sorry, I just can't help you because it oh would destroy gosh. my law career. Sure. And they know that. Yep. And right, of course. And they know that. Um, and that's how I it think that's why um, Lori Daybell now, couldn't what did get um Lori Daybell couldn't get uh bail bondsman. I think because everyone just yeah. turned the other way. Like nobody wanted to get involved with that. Nobody wanted to help right. her. No. Everyone was saying, how could they do that? Like they have to give her her rights. Well, I'm sure. Probably. Well, they, the they have to let you cross-examine the witnesses that they use as evidence against you, right? Right. That, yeah, yeah, that's true. Not. Yeah. <laughs> no. So really they can just do their own thing and hope to God sure. you know how to outsmart them and save your own butt. I didn't True. outsmart them. I didn't save my own butt. It's an absolute disgust that uh, the legal profession chose, and they chose. They knew. They knew everything. And you go to my website, you can see all the letters I sent to them. They had exactly. all the evidence. They knew. The Law Society of Ontario knew that these lawyers had fabricated evidence, lied to the court, committed perjury and obstruct justice and bribe police. They knew all that, but they sent an innocent man to jail. Excuse me while I decline that call. Mm -hmm. Man to jail. Mm -hmm. And they knew that and they did it to protect their buddies. But most of them did it because they were afraid. Oh, sure. That's what happened. Megan J has a, a question, if you see that, Tanya. I'm Megan, looking. Do district attorneys have full immunity? Oh, not that one. <laughs> I don't know why I don't see it. Oh, there we go. There we go. Do district attorneys have full immunity from corruption and prosecutorial misconduct? Do they? I don't know. What do you think, Donald? I think there are different rules in each jurisdiction. Right. I'm familiar with some of the rules in Canada, and it's very, very difficult to prosecute a crown attorney, a crown yeah. attorney, Which is like a uh, or even complain against one. It's just very difficult. Uh, you would have to have videotape of the whole thing. It's, it's, it's. I can't even remember where, when it was done, the last. Um, and that's reality. So, you know, once again, it's up to the people in these various systems to keep the systems pure, to keep them full of integrity and to maintain the respect that the public should have for law enforcement in the courts and the legal profession. Right. But it, for a long time now, They've all fallen short of that. And once again, it's not because all lawyers are all cops or no. all judges are, are corrupt. No, They're not. It's, not, it's no. just a sliver of them. Right. But we punish whistleblowers and their families. We sure do. We sure right. do. Mm -hmm. So 138 lawyers weren't going to help me. And some other crown attorney who sees a crown attorney doing something is going to look the other way. Mm -hmm. 
That's reality, folks, and I've learned wow. that. Wow. Do you know about Rodney Reed or Rodney Reed's case? Uh, Rodney Reed, uh, are you I'm talking about right now? No, the... I, I, I may have heard of it, but I'm sorry. I've, I've, I know a little bit about a thousand cases. Tell us right. about it, Chair. So do I, right. <laughs> um, so Rodney Reed is on death row. He was supposed to be put to death actually in November, like November 13th or something like that. Um, and Kim, that's the person Kim Kardashian stopped the, the death of. Um, because now there is DNA proving, which is why his execution was stopped for November. Um, but they are playing games. It's a black man. Um, the DNA proves it wasn't him. There's a bunch of evidence. It's a corrupt, um, the same medical examiner Rhonda shared. So okay. it's a corrupt and known to be corrupt medical examiner too. Um, but they're still following through and playing games with him getting a new trial and being like released and, and let go. But they did manage to stop his execution and they haven't, I believe, tested the DNA even yet, but it just, it blows my mind and he's still on death row right now, even though the execution has been stopped, they know they hold the evidence that could free this man, but they're not doing it. And why are they not? Why? Because they don't want to look wrong <laughs> that, they, that they've had a black man in prison for decades yeah. that is innocent. They don't want to look wrong. No, I mean, they need to release him and make reparations to his family somehow. I mean, even if they do release him, I, I always I always thought that the poor, wrongly accused people end up getting the short end of the deal, even if they are exonerated and released. It they don't, really you know. does make me think differently about the Stephen Avery case, because mm -hmm. I keep flip-flopping with that, too. But to know that he was awarded money for being falsely put in jail, and he was awarded millions of dollars then all wow. of a sudden someone's dead on his property i always wow. thought that was not right yeah. even though everyone around me thinks i'm crazy but i mean <laughs> you're millions crazy, of dollars on the line. crazy share at it again yeah yeah there she goes again um but did you want to talk more about charles's case Wilcox. yeah what do you think about um so you actually do believe in his innocence then donald a bit or from what you've heard well i i, I wouldn't characterize it as that I, uh because i have and once again okay i uh, for I me to it. come on and make pronouncements about cases where i i, I have I, I can't do that okay right um but i will say that his story has the ring of truth okay i know I note that apparently, and I haven't interviewed the witness myself, of course not, but that the victim came forward years later to say, am I correct, that, that they said they were pressured into yeah. testifying to, to uh, uh, because their mother didn't want her lover to be charged or something or whatever. The, well, I, no, I'm it wasn't the mother. That. It was the other uncle who was also friends with the victim's stepfather, so the mom's okay. husband, who married the mom when the mom was 12 years old. So that's a whole other issue that never even yeah. got looked at. So well, that, the man that's married too. a 12-year-old, yeah. And then also Charles just recently, actually, his other two nieces came forward and said, while my uncle was in prison, we were being molested by the stepdad yeah. and the other person that is to blame, who died of wow. cancer, by the way. I was not aware of that. And yeah. I mean, in total, you look at that evidence and it has the ring of truth. Absolutely. But once again, he pled guilty I'm and right. he's not in jail. But, uh, and, and I'm not saying that to disprove, I'm saying that that is the attitude of people. Whereas right. people don't, uh, once again, people don't understand uh, about uh, about pleading guilty and, and I don't know how much time we have left, but there's a whole area of, of conversation that we should have on expert witnesses. Because oh, okay. expert witnesses who are corrupt, for sale, incompetent, sure. agenda-driven, there are tons of them that, uh, that have been responsible for so, much, so many lives destroyed Sure. Uh, and and in Canada, 
we uh, changed our laws uh, by recently, I maybe within the decade, uh, we changed our laws about experts and expert witnesses. Okay. Uh, because we had a series of uh, terrible happenings with expert witnesses. For instance, we had a pathologist called Charles Smith, Dr. Charles Smith. We ended up having uh, a commission of inquiry on, on this man. And he was a pathologist who said uh, many, many times that mothers, fathers had murdered their own children, had shaken them to death or in one case, stabbed them to death. He's a pathologist. He should know, right? He's an expert right. witness. Well, it turns out he was such an expert witness that one uh, child who was bitten to death by a dog, his evidence was that the mother had stabbed. Had stabbed. Oh, my. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and she was in jail for two years. Oh my! She, before she was exonerated, and we had um, also these. Uh, well, the uh, the corrupt police officer who was involved uh, in my case. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is Jim Van Allen. He used to be a a detective sergeant with the Ontario Provincial Police, okay. and he was an expert witness in statements. And in fact, okay. he said. Uh, and once again, I'm going to be careful here because I believe there was a case in Sault Ste. Marie and there was that case with the dog. There's two cases. Right. And uh, I, actually, we should I would we should do a show on the on the whole issue of expert witnesses. Sure. But what happened yeah, is something coming back. In, 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 say again. I said he'll definitely have to come back on. Well, oh, Donald? Could, Absolutely, yeah. Sure. Definitely. I mean, if you could get the corrupt police officer on, that'd be great, too. But yeah. don't count on it. <laughs> but in, in two cases, he was one of these uh, statement uh, vetters where he purportedly could look at a witness's statement and tell from certain indicators whether they were telling the truth or not. Wow. And his indication was that this woman, in fact, had murdered uh, had murdered her child. Oh wow! And and it oh. turned out that the the child had been savaged by a dog. So sure. there there's an ex there's two expert witnesses: the pathologist and the Ontario Provincial Police uh, officer who was an expert in statements. And and there we are. And that came, his name came up in the Dr. Charles Smith that the corrupt police officer uh, Jim Van Allen. Uh, his yeah. name came up in that inquiry. I have the transcripts. But, um, you know, there you go. So the whole issue, you say, why would people plead guilty? We have an expert witness. He's a doctor. He's a yeah. pathologist. Yeah, right, and right. this is his report. So he has to know what he's talking about. Just like um, I know that in the Casey Anthony case, was it, is his name Werner Spitz? Is that the guy? Um, he incorrectly said something about the child's skull. And he was so wrong. Um, right. And they had, yeah, and they had Dr. G in there, who, in my opinion, she knows everything um, that she should know. And she doesn't really make that many mistakes. But she said, you know, she disagreed with the other doctors, um, the other expert witnesses' testimony about the skull. Um, so, yeah, the, you know, expert witnesses, What? who are they? What do they mean, really? I don't know. Um, you're, basically, you're being bullied and harassed into pleading. Yeah. Okay. So, exactly right, um, right. Megan right. J has a good question for Donald while we still have a little bit of time. Yeah, yeah. That's... Do you see that? It says at Donald Best, if there is a DA or public official that is known for corruption, is there anything the public can do? If so, what would you recommend? Well, oh. first of all, that is good. The, the answer is you can't ignore it, but no. you have to be. Wise as a serpent, I believe is the, you know, is the <laughs> phrase, uh, or sly. You people don't realize the difference. What evidence really is, and if you don't have the evidence to back your claim, and by that, by evidence, I mean that it can be replicated, proven that there's continuity. We can tell it hasn't been uh, uh, 
you know, modified or that someone has changed it without people knowing. Right. And, and all of these factors, what's evidence and what's rumor, what's conjecture? And I always say, if you don't document something at the time in a credible manner, it's not evidence. It's just right. rumor. Okay. It's just, he said, she said. So, so the first thing you have to have is evidence. And just okay. because there's lots of smoke doesn't mean there's fire. Could be something right. else. I had a number of very serious complaints against me as a police officer. Wow. Okay. I, I did. Every police officer does. Wow. Why? Why? Because you're in that position, you're vulnerable. I had a I was arrested one time for stealing twenty dollars from a prisoner. Oh my. Wanna hear about it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Of so course. guys, I'm I'm a Toronto cop and this guy, he's um He's making a fuss on, on a, uh, a streetcar and he's half drunk or he's high on something and he's shoved someone. So we get a call. I'm there. I'm the first guy. I arrest him. I put him in handcuffs. I search him. He's got no weapons. Uh, you don't know who you're dealing with. So you handcuff him. I put him in the backseat of the car. Now at this time, we didn't even have a screen in the backseat of the car to oh, separate no. the prisoners from from. You know, right. Uh, oh, how dangerous. They were, well, they were old times, okay? Right. Uh, so, so anyway, uh, I'm on the way to the, the station. Take him in. And he says, you stole money from me. I said, no, I, no, I didn't. He said, well, I'm going to tell him that. And they'll believe me because cops are all bad and everything. So you better let what? me go. So oh, while he God. was... Yeah, so while he wasn't looking, I grabbed the radio, mm -hmm. the microphone, I turned it on, and I put it, he couldn't see that I was holding it there, right? Oh, my. So all the police cars are listening to him, and I, I said, but I never stole any money from you. And he says, right. that doesn't matter. They're going to believe it anyway. And on and on and on. So oh what have my I got? Goodness. I've got him confessing on tape that he's going to falsely claim that I stole money from him unless I let him go. Okay? Oh I've got that. God. It goes on all over the air. And, of course, that's tape recorded. So that's fine. I get the tape. Yeah. The sergeant's ready there for me, you know, because okay. he's heard. Somebody's phoned him. Hey, Donnie's coming in with a... Uh, somebody who's going to claim whatever, we've got a recording oh. or whatever, okay? How awful. And so the sergeant comes in, and the guy says, this officer stole money from me. <laughs> the sergeant smiles and says, what did he steal? He said, he stole one $20 bill. Right. Officer Best, officer Best turn out your pockets. I have one $20 bill in my pocket. Oh my God. And oh now, my. And now, all of my fellow coppers and the sergeant are looking at me funny. I bet, yeah. And the, and the man says to me, and this is like two in the morning, three in the morning. Sir. And the guy says to the, to the sergeant, arrest him, arrest him. The sergeant goes, hey, sorry, Don, you're under arrest. Oh my goodness. So they put me in a room because of that $20 bill. Oh, my goodness. Okay. They put me in a room, doing everything by the book. <laughs> and at three, hey, it's not a laughing matter. I, I, I mean, my God. I bet, yeah. Did the awesome. guy plan it? No. So anyway, the coppers come in. The internal investigators come in. Officer Best. You know, what can you tell us about it? And I said this. My wife went to the money machine yesterday and got Sir? a bunch of $20 bills. Sir? And we keep it in the tea pot in the dining room cabinet at home. Okay. And I hope to God that the serial number 
on the bill in my pocket matches or is sequential to right. the ones that are in the teapot. Sure. So at three o'clock in the morning, they woke up my wife. Oh, I bet she was terrified. Frightened to death. <laughs> and there in the teapot were the other four bills from the $100. Good. And yes, they were basically sequential. Good. The one, and they took that bill and they and they took the one from my pocket and they had it, you know, fingerprinted for his fingerprints. And I was going to say do that. That would be the quick way to find out. Yeah. Right. Okay. So all of that happened to me. Why? Because I was a cop was just doing my duty. So, right. you know, when you when you talk about Always oh, had so many complaints. That police officer. Well, is he just a hard-working cop? Right. There are others who don't do anything. They get no complaints at all. No, you're correct. No, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Well, that's a different um, perspective that some of our friends might not have. No, that's true. And I feel terrible for you know anyone who's out there being a, a police officer right now because they're getting such a bad rap. And um, there are nice police officers that are are nice, you know, doctors or, you know, whatever. And then there are bad ones every in every profession. Um, uh, absolutely. Can we do um, the people are wanting like a time really quick before I know you're, you don't usually do them long, Tanya, but um, Megan, Jay, and a couple others are actually wondering if we can just do like a, um, ask Donald some questions here before we end it. Oh, sure. Let's do a Q&A. They okay, also, Donald. Donald, they really like your story and say that you should write a book because they will buy you it. should. Well, Definitely. There's a documentary that has been shot. It's being Good. edited and it's scheduled for television in the fall. Awesome. Um, Aaron Matei, who's an award winning journalist, uh, mm -hmm. you know, has been working hard on it. And uh, what can I say? These things take time. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's being some, uh, uh, I guess, some. Um, what do they call it? B-roll being shot now. You know, here's the courthouse. Here's the jail. Here's the there. this. Here's the that. So I think we'll we'll be seeing that in the fall. And um, I'll, let, I'll let you know. I'll give you a heads up. Wonderful. Awesome. You should definitely write about it, in my opinion. But um, And you guys, if you want to start yeah, commenting because... your questions for Donald really quick before Tanya ends us. And we'll have Donald back on again. We'll, we'll schedule we'll Donald sure on. Well. Sure. Yeah. Be happy to. Oh, thank you very much for being here, Donald. For one thing, I really appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Caffeine Q. Mary Sharice a oh, chair. I missed all the live. Oh, no. That's okay. It'll be up here um, in replay, of course. Um, I'm having a hard time. Let's see here. Isn't the evidence the plea deal not being based on truth? Yeah, that is kind of weird. I don't know. But that has... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Angel Wayne was... said, how did you bring down your accusers? Or you? Uh, well, I don't know if I brought them down at all. Uh, basically, the system uh, would not let me present my evidence. Even when I got to uh, try and have an appeal, when the lawyers had lied to the court, the corrupt judge and some other judges had levied um, costs against me of, I think it's almost $500,000 now. Oh, my. So the corrupt lawyers uh, went to the court and said, unless he pays this money up front into the court, don't give him, don't give him an appeal. Hmm. And therefore, I had to go back to jail. Mm, because gosh. I don't know about you guys, but I don't have half a million dollars cash lying around. Right, right. Right. So oh, uh, basically, I mean, that is the most outrageous thing that a person faces. Oh, I think I've lost my camera. Oh, no, I don't see you anymore. Check All and make right, sure well, you've got your camera allowed. Well, uh, I think what's happened is my camera has run out of uh, battery. Uh, so what oh, I'm going no. to try, let me try and switch over. Let me see if I can do it. Maybe sure. it'll be a disaster. Oh, I don't mm -hmm. know. Let's Aww. see. 
And here we've got a question from there. There's my there face on camera. Hello. Oh, okay. You're back. Awesome. Um, back. Megan has another question. What advice can you give to anyone who is afraid to speak up and other potential whistleblowers? What advice well, can you give okay. them? Okay. Well, first of all, have your evidence. Begin documenting uh, your story very, very early. If you intend to whistleblow, you had better have your evidence because mm -hmm. if you don't, they will eat you alive. I bet. And you better learn what evidence is. You better right. learn how to preserve it, what the rules are, how to make sure that it's duplicated in a proper way and not at your home. Because not at they, your home. The, Yes, because depending on, on I know a, 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 a police officer, Paul Manning. Uh, you can look him up. Uh, he's, okay. he's on uh, Twitter and, and everything in Hamilton, Ontario. And he has made very serious allegations uh, that uh, organized crime uh, knew about his undercover work, that uh, fellow police officers betrayed him, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, boy. And he was going to whistleblow. Okay. And the police came to his home with a warrant and took oh. various evidence that he had. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yes. Now, I I don't know. I presume he had that copied somewhere because, because uh, and, and he, he'd actually be a great guy to have on your show, too. Sure. Um, and once again, I can't speak to the truth of the evidence. I'm not entirely familiar with everything. But what I do know is he was a whistleblower. Uh, and they came and they took his evidence. So oh, my God. Make sure your evidence is away from your home. Make sure you have real evidence. Make sure you begin documenting and always within the law. You can't do anything. Uh, no, you can't do anything you know, outside the law because they probably right. wouldn't accept it. Right. But people have to make a choice. And some sure. of them are not capable of making that choice. And I understand that. You've got oh, a definitely. mortgage that you're barely hanging on. You've got mm -hmm. two little children. Sure. Three little children. I've been in the same position myself. I don't. I can't blame any individual generally, just like no. those 138 no. lawyers. Yeah, I blame them. Uh, I blame the system. And, um, everything. and I think uh, I have. Uh, sure. Will you blame? Yeah. Anyone, any where there's corruption. Um, and I'm getting a thunderstorm right now and my lights are literally flickering, guys. So I'm going <laughs> to. I can see it brewing in front in my back window here. It's like black skies, but um, before anything happens yeah. and we disappear. Donald, um, thanks for coming thank on. Thank you guys so much. With you again, Donald, Donald. You're awesome. I, we yeah. have to do it again. We really do. I appreciate everything that you've told us and you're, you know, an incredible speaker and we want to know more, oh, yeah. of course. And um, right. if you don't but mind, I would love it for you to come back another time. I'd be happy to, and, and I'll just Thank you. end up by, by, by saying this about, about the both of you. The work you're doing is very, very important. It's not well, being done you. by the mainstream media. There are so right. many people out there who have suffered injustices, uh, and, 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 you know, we should all be doing what we can, but you can only do so much, but you're doing a great job. And, Thank and you. That's, that's my message to you. And you have done a great job too. So thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Yeah, um, your story is very fascinating. I can see a lot of people yeah. in the chat saying that they're very fascinated with your story. So, oh, definitely. Um, we appreciate you being here. Thank you again. Well, thanks for and the opportunity to tell my story. And, certainly. Uh, goodbye very from, from. You guys Canada. have a Oh, I can hear my phone. Oh, my I'll gosh. I'll be in touch with you, Donald. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you all again. Thank you, Cher. Thank you, Donald. I'll talk to you all later. Thank you, all my viewers. And um, have a good night, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.